For sort of writing, it's, it's crazy how good phone technology is these days. I think you can really get away with just using your phone. It's so small, you're gonna have it on you anyway. And if you have something that's, you know, sort of after an iPhone 12 or even any sort of Android made in the last couple years, the, the camera quality is so insane that it, it kind of rivals my camera, which is a little bit uh, annoying. But uh, I, what's, that's, that's really, really good. It means that when you're a rider on the tour, all you've got to do is, you know, reach into your back pocket, grab out your phone, take a couple photos, and they don't need to be the most incredible photos in the world. They just need to be able to jog a memory in your head of a good time or a hard day or a Coke stop or someone you met. And, and if they can do that, then I think you're totally fine. So I would definitely go either that route or I would go a small compact camera. So that, would, that was kind of the second thing that I saw worked really well on tour for some people. Um, one of the riders um, had sort of this like, they're little like adventure cameras and they're literally like this big um, so they still fit in sort of your back pocket and that sort of thing. It's really just about having something small, something safe, and something super easy to pull out and, and get that photo. For me, the biggest difference between photo and video is that photos stand alone and videos don't. And what I mean by that is when you're showing someone an image, it has to tell the whole story. Yeah, you're, I mean, especially with a TDA tour, you're probably going to show them a carousel or you're going to show them you know, multiple sort of images, but still each image has to do everything, right? It has to have the subject, it has to have the story, it has to have the kind of background, and it has to be all in that one frame, and it has to be, as soon as someone looks at it, they have to get it. I think with video, there's a lot more flexibility uh, because you're essentially composing multiple shots uh, over an extended period of time, which could be 30 seconds, a minute, 25 minutes, 90 minutes if you're doing a feature, and you're telling a story throughout that whole time. So you've got so many options of, of how to do different things. If you haven't got much experience in taking a photo, uh, a beautiful thing to think of is for composition is the rule of thirds. But essentially in every given shot, you should try and align something on the rule of thirds. So if you sort of split the uh, screen into these kind of two sort of two lines horizontally and two lines vertically. There are these four little corners um, and they're sort of just off the center of the screen uh, and they're super interesting points. If you try and put something on that point, which is you know just a bit off center like over here or just a bit off center over here, uh, you're really gonna get an image that's super interesting. Um, it is sometimes nice to put something in the middle, like for example, you know I'm sort of sitting in the middle of this camera right now because it's kind of an interview and that works. But for most other things, you kind of just want to put them a little bit on the left or a little bit on the right. As long as you put you know, your, your point of interest in the frame on one of those, on that kind of grid, that rule of thirds, you generally end up with a really awesome composition. From the lighting point of view, uh, lighting's probably one of the, I mean, it's not like you're gonna have anything you can really do about the lighting while you're on tour because everything is going to be naturally lit so it's going to be daylight or it's going to be a fire or a street light so there's not really much you can sort of play around with but uh, what I always try and do is to put light on the part of the image that I'm interested in so if that's you know we're talking about that rule of thirds again and we have someone our subject here maybe we want him lit and we want the background super dark to give you some nice sort of contrast in levels of lighting or maybe we want to do the opposite. We want to have him super dark like a silhouette and we just want to sort of see the, the background. So I think just trying to think about what you want your subject to look like in terms of lighting uh, is a good way to go, but there's not that much control that you're going to kind of have on the day. Um, I definitely think that it's, it's, uh, it's super hard to try and... You've just got to work with what you've got, right? Like it, you can't just... You know, if you're, we're doing a silhouette of a sunset, there's no way you can expose the person and you can also expose for the, the, the background, right? Like one of those isn't gonna be exposed correctly. So you just kind of deal with what you've got and you're like, okay, well, I can't expose his face, but I can get this really awesome silhouette shot. I'm gonna get that. And, and by just, you know, sort of dealing with those circumstances and following those basic ideas of where is the light coming from and am I using the rule of thirds, I think you'll get some, some really good shots. Putting effort in is probably actually the biggest factor. Um, and, you know, even if you, you're a bit confused by the rule of thirds or, or you're confused by that, what I was talking about lighting, there's super loads of uh, tutorials on YouTube you can learn super basic photography tips off. Uh, but I would definitely agree with you and I'd say like putting that effort into the image is actually what's gonna make a good image. Just rather than let it, like, cause I can pull out my phone right now and take a photo, right? But it's not gonna be that good of a photo. But if I just think, oh, okay, 
Where's the light coming from? Who am I trying to shoot? And what do I, what do I want them to look like? Or what do I kind of want to feel in this image? Uh, having that little mental checklist of going like, is my lighting good? Is my comp, uh, you know, is my composition okay? Do I kind of like how this image is looking? Just taking those literally two or three seconds can change, you know, an average photo into um, something that's really good. Because when you take that time to think, I think that's when you look at an image and go, oh, this image actually sucks before you take it. And then you just slightly reposition, you get a completely different image and, and it looks a million times better. I think it's a really good idea um, because it gives you sort of something, um, it forces you to kind of take those photos and make those memories, uh, which I think is really important. And it helps sort of family and friends back home as well sort of connect with what you're doing and see like the day-to-day the -day reminders of what's going on. I think just don't try and like make anything perfect. Like it kind of goes back to what I was saying before. It's what I try and do in all my work is just take really nice, authentic stuff. Like what was the highlight or the low light of your day? Take a little photo of that. Think about the, you know, that composition, lighting, framing for five seconds, take that photo and just, just put it up there. Don't try and, you know, do anything too perfect and think, oh, I can't post this photo because it's not good enough. Because really, I think what people are looking to see and the kind of photos that you really want from a tour like TDAs is those authentic, those real ones, those tough ones, those harsh ones, the, the raw stuff, right? So I wouldn't try and do anything too perfect. I was able to post basically uh, every day throughout the tour. You know, there's every time you move into a new country, TDA staff are super helpful with finding you a local SIM card. You can get local data and then you can, you know, contact family and friends. Yeah, there might be a couple days where you sort of internet drops out. But you can always, you know, post a couple extra photos when you get it back to sort of, you know, update people in the last couple of days of what's going on. And um, yeah, shouldn't really be an issue. And I think, you know, creating that, uh, you know, Instagram and sort of try and post a couple images in a little feed every day. Awesome way to make memories and um, definitely recommend it. Yeah, that, that's probably two of the bigger challenges, I think, on the tour. Uh, you're definitely not going to have access to power every day. Depends on what tour you go. Obviously, if you're on a sort of a, a class one or a level one uh, tour, there's going to be a bit more power accessibility, you know, through Europe and those sorts of things. But for something a bit more extreme, like a, um, the Tour d'Afrique, uh, power every day is definitely not going to be something that happens. Um, the, the, the big TDA truck that comes around with you and, and cooks all of your meals and carries sick riders and medical gear and all that sort of thing, that does have power, but unfortunately that's only reserved for, you know, keeping the, the operation moving and not for, for personal charging. So what a lot of riders did is they brought a little solar pack. Some people just chucked it on the back of their, um, you know, on the back of their bike, uh, just heating up throughout the day as they were riding, and that it powered a little external battery. Um, others just had an external battery, charged it on the rest days, and then used that to charge phones or Kindles or, or whatever, or cameras. Um, on the days when there, when there wasn't power. So I think bringing one of those or two of those, that'd be um, yeah, a super easy way to get done what you need to get done. From a data point of view, I think that it's, you, you probably just, my, my philosophy is you kind of want to just have two copies of everything. So whether you buy a super big SD card, so you never have to delete every, anything from your camera, or you buy two little external hard drives that are a terabyte each, you really don't want to get to the end of a, a super long tour and lose a thousand photos because you didn't back them up. So having those two independent copies, you know, in different bags. Um, so if one gets flooded or, or, you know, something happens, you've got all that stuff backed up. I think that's kind of your, your sort of best way to go about it.